just 20 weeks ago, I got a call from um, George, who is the pastor of uh, Highgate Road Chapel, and we were just about to start our prayer meeting there, and uh, he said to me, um, <clears throat> what are you going to do about tonight's prayer meeting? And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, the government have just announced that they don't want churches meeting up because of the COVID-19. And uh, so that was the end of the prayer meeting. And then we have from Wednesday to Sunday to uh, get church online. And by God's grace, and thanks to uh, the help of the Crawley family and the contribution of many, um, we've had uh, 19 wonderful lockdown Sundays. Now we're gonna take a break and we're gonna do these four weeks on what is church. During um, the lockdown, we've had uh, one or two uh, leaders meetings with the local church leaders. And um, it's interesting that everybody has said the same thing, that after this lockdown, uh, they feel that church will never be the same again. And I believe that's true. Um, <clears throat> so we have an opportunity really to change. We could regard uh, what's happened and the restrictions on church as a threat, um, or as I would like to do, as an opportunity uh, to take us into the future and to see what God would do at this time. Um, thinking about the, the, the way the church has changed since the early church, um, the English language reflects the churches and our culture with regard to, to, uh, to church. For example, if you saw um, a beautiful church, say St Paul's Cathedral, you might say, look at that beautiful church. And we're thinking of the church as a, a place, as brickwork. And yet in the early church, it wasn't until three centuries that they started to have their own buildings that uh, they in some way regarded as churches. Church in the New Testament, every reference to the church is always to do with people and not the building. Um, another thing we might say is, oh, she goes to church um, on Sundays. And we have this thought that the church is something that we go to, even the event of church. But the Bible says that we are the church. And in one sense, you can't go to where you already are. And we have this kind of Sunday thing um, that we go to church on Sundays and the rest of the week we are ourselves. And I believe that's something that needs to change in the early church their Christianity ran through every day in their homes, in their lives, in all sorts of ways. And then uh, some people used to say, well, I'm going to be uh, a doctor or I'm going to be um, a business person um, or I'm going to I'm going to join the church. And by that, they meant they, they would join the clergy uh, of the established church or of the Catholic church or uh, a Methodist church, whatever it would be. And uh, it was essentially the thought that you joined a kind of priesthood and you had the clergy and the laity, the, 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 the regular people and the professionals, as it were. And again, that's not a New Testament concept. The Bible says that we are a royal priesthood, that we are all kings and priests to our God and that we as God's people are the ones who do the work of service, not a professional group of, pe of paid people. Other people might say, um, oh, where do you worship? And that expression, where do you worship? Well, uh, oh, I worship at New Life. Oh, well, I'm, I'm glad you do when you, when you go to New Life, you worship. Um, but we have this thought, again, that worship is something we do on Sundays. And yet for the early church, they were forever praising God. It was part of their daily lives. And that's something that we need to make sure that we don't lose. Um, when New Life started, um, or whatever it was, about 40 years ago, it was part of the house church movement. And out of that sprang Pioneer and New Frontiers um, and uh, a number of different streams. But they started as house churches, as people were dissatisfied with organised religion. And so they, they, they went to something more primitive uh, in the homes. And then they started to grow. And so they, they went into, as we did, we went to, to a dance hall then a community centre and then to the school. And gradually the trappings of the overhead projector and the, uh, and the sermon, and there was an order and a structure to every Sunday um, that people begin, be, uh, began to rely on. And, 
uh, if, if we're not careful, we're back in the same place that we were before and we lose the life. You see, there's nothing wrong with structure. There's nothing wrong with organisation. There's nothing ro wrong with ministry. Um, but what is wrong is when we depend and we rely on those things and substitute them from a real relationship with Jesus himself. Um, I want you for a moment just to think about church. When I say uh, the word church, just close your eyes maybe and think what comes into your mind when you think about church. And uh, I'd like you to just hold that thought because um, we're going to come back to, to that in uh, just a few moments. And now I want to read out to you what the early church uh, was like. Acts 2.42, they spent their time in learning from the apostles, taking part in the fellowship, sharing in the fellowship meals and prayers. Many miracles and wonders uh, were being done through the apostles and everyone, everyone was filled with awe. All the believers continued together in close fellowship and shared their belongings with one another. They would sell their property and possessions and distribute the money among all according to what everyone needed. And day after day they met as a group in the temple and they had their meals together in their homes, eating with glad and humble hearts, praising God and enjoying the goodwill of the people. And every day the Lord added to their group those who were being saved. Just consider how that compares with church, that thought you've just had, and uh, church as we know it today. During this uh, lockdown time, um, I've talked to various people about how it's affected them, and Christian and non-Christian have, have often said the same things. Two themes that have, that have clearly come through to me is, number one, what is necessary because actually uh, what is unnecessary has been taken out of people's lives. They discovered, uh, I don't need to commute, I can work at home. Um, I don't need to shop, I can order online. Um, I don't need to go clubbing, I can find some other uh, form of entertainment or just be happy with the simple things of life. The second thing that people have thought about is what is important? What is important? What is priority? And it's been a time, it's almost like God has pressed the pause button and we've been caused to think what is necessary, what is important. And over these four weeks, I'd like for us to have a look at what is important, what is necessary, what are the basic essentials of church life. Essentially, there are two elements of church life. And actually, in one way, really only one. And those two elements are Jesus and the church. In Matthew 16, 18, Jesus says these incredible words, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And so this next thing that Jesus was going to do was a church, was an assembly, that word means ecclesia, a, a, a group of called out people he was going to use to carry out his purposes and he was going to continue to be the builder. In fact, in Acts 1, the very first verse in Acts, Luke says this. He says in the first book, that's the book of Luke, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach. Take note of that word, began. You see, Jesus had only just begun because through the church, he wanted to continue to do that work through you and I. In 1 Corinthians 12, 27, Paul puts it this way. He says, together, you, that's me, that's you sitting there, you are the body of Christ. Together we are the body of Christ and each one of you is part of that body. And so this isn't something individual, this isn't something just for me and Jesus, this is me and you and Jesus together and together we are the body of Christ. There are many pictures um, of the church in the New Testament, a, a building, a bride, but actually the body is a reality. 
In fact, as if you were to touch your shoulder, as I'm doing now, you would be touching the body of Christ. The Bible says that we are members, that our members are members of his body. We literally are the hands and feet that Jesus has upon the earth. And he has chosen to use us imperfect people for his work. What a wonder that is. So, in closing, I'd just like you to think about three questions as we break up uh, now. Uh, number one is, what came into mind uh, when you thought about the word church? Think back to what you thought about when you thought about church. Secondly, what is necessary and important in church life? And thirdly, do I consider myself to be a vital part of Jesus' work today.